Hi, my name is Olunike Adeli. I'm an actress and a philanthropist, and I'm also producer of the Toronto Monologue Slam. And uh, I'm part of the Amanda Rosenthal Talent Agency, and also part of Zero Gravity Management in Los Angeles. And uh, what else do you want to say? <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. No worries. So, what was your big break? Um, the TV show uh, Flashpoint, which is now global. Um, I, I got uh, pretty lucky after I came back from theater school in New York. Um, it didn't, wasn't very long before I, I auditioned for the show, and the rest is history. Yeah. And what are you most proud of and why? Ah, that's a hard question. I would probably say. Um, the, it was a it was a short that was done by Sheridan students. It's called um, Two Cities, where I got to play an African woman, and uh, it, it got me more. Got me a, it allowed me to work more in my cultural um, accents, and uh, yeah, I, I was very proud of the fact that that they they did a like a, a, a contrast of my brother who's supposed to be a child soldier in I believe it was the Congo and me not knowing me in Canada not knowing if he lived or died when he was stolen from me when he was a little child and then I got rescued because I was a refugee and I got to come to Canada and uh, help other refugees but he became lost to me so they did the story on both sides um, yeah where he is now what he's doing because what happened it connected because his his um, his grouping of child soldiers they kidnapped uh, a journalist that was from Canada yeah so yeah and then the person came to me the person who was his wife to help him um, get money from the government to help with the negotiations um, but I had to refuse him because we don't do that. We are not privy to terrorism. So it was hard because I wanted to also give him the money or find the money for him because I just had this, I had a feeling that it was connected to my brother and if whatever way I can help him. So I was in a very, um, a, a, a conflict, my back against the wall. So it was, it was really emotional and trying and, and a, a lot of hard work. So I'm very proud of it. And it was just, this, and it was, it I went through festivals and stuff, people saw it and I was like, oh, and they always mention that and it's always a part of my demo reel. Oh, nice. nice. Mm -hmm. um, what advice do you have for everyone at the beginning of their career? Study. Um, you, I mean, I don't understand when we're artists and we don't practice our craft. And believe it or not, when you become a part of the industry, it's a big deal. Like, they will look at that and know that you're trained um, and you will possibly get the role or the part or the, the gig based on the fact that they know of what schooling you're coming from. It's just like if you were a doctor or a lawyer, you're not going to practice without studying and having that degree, that paper, right? So it's the same that goes for artists, all artists, but specifically actors. I mean, I took it upon myself to leave Canada and study in the United States and get my degree in theater. And when I came back, it made it made things much easier for me. Yeah, so study, 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 and then never stop studying because there's never a time that I'm not in a class. I'm always fine tuning my craft, and that's something that I learned from um, many mentors throughout my career. How do you prepare for an audition? Very good question. I start by not panicking. <laughs> And uh, the way I've tr been trained is, uh, you know, we start to do, you do um, very, it's simplistic but very complex work of sensory, private moments with yourself and as the character to know what the what the differences are between you and that character and what the similarities are between you and that character. I also take on animal work. Um, so I always go through research of what animal would I would like to um, use as that character and then work on the animal, eventually standing the animal up into human form and then only having 
like traces of the animal while you're speaking human dialogue. Um, yes, and then you go on to wardrobe, you start with the shoes, what would they wear, and then eventually get into the full outfit. Uh, but I go from the outside in, I don't go right to the dialogue, um, because then it becomes just about the dialogue. You, really, you read the, the minimum that you read a script before you start would be five times. Five times. And then when it comes to learning the dialogue, it, it just falls, it goes, comes right off the page. Because you've done all the other um, research and all the other work on self, on the character. And it's important also not to judge the character because the character is you. Just find the similarities. Yeah. Okay. Um, what tips do you have for someone when they are in the audition? Well, for myself, I always have my headphones off because it, there's a lot of nervous people in the room and they like to talk to you. So to take away, if they, if they indirectly or directly take away that focus that you have and their focus because they're putting their nerves onto you. So I, even if I don't have music in my headphones, I just put them on. So it, it means like she's in her zone. And to just be calm. I mean, you you should have practiced it so much that you're confident. Like you're gonna always have nerves. That just comes with it. And they actually have to be there because they help fuel the work. But to be practiced so much that it's in the body that when you go in, you don't have to remember anything. You're just there and you're beat. Yeah. Yes. You have to know the business side and the artistic side. One doesn't go without the other. And uh, promotion, we have social media now. You know, and I understand. I mean, there are some artists that says, oh, I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to promote myself. But those are A-listers <laughs> that, that have other people that do that. When you don't have that status yet, it's important to be connected, to network, to go out to the events, like the Toronto Monologue Slam, um, to meet other people, directors, producers. We have pretty important people that come here to give their time to help grow this community of artists. So that, that, I mean, yes, promotion is a part of it. I've met lots of artists that don't do that and they don't know why their career is not advancing. And it's not because you're not good, it's because no one knows who you are, right? Because this industry is based on a name. They need their money back. Hollywood is numbers, and if people don't understand what the numbers mean, meaning I need to make my money back, then you're in the wrong business. Speaking of I do, I do. I do. It's called The Atomic Tradition, and it's going to be at uh, Unit 102 Theatre, starting, I believe, June 16 to 21st, and uh, it's just something that I just, I just um, got offered, and I said, absolutely, because any opportunity that I get to do theatre, I take it, because it fine-tunes the skills for film and television. So I'm very nervous and very excited to begin the work on that, yeah. Do you think appearing in a tap dance Of course it can. Of course it can, because everybody gets to know who you are. The thing is, to not for them not to know your personal life. The, here's the thing, it's because it's a it's a double-edged sword. If you're in the tabloids too much, no one goes to see your work because they feel they already know you. So it's important to keep a big part of your personal life. Personal. Yes. But it couldn't hurt all you know, all publicity is is good. It's always going to be good, right? And if you're Canadian, think about it. If you are in the tabloids, or people are writing about you, or interviews like this, it helps you with your green card or your visas when you're going to the United States. Because it becomes a part of your package, your application for U.S. status. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges performance-based on Um... That's a, a hard one because everybody's different. Some might say race, uh, some might say even the quality of the work, 
are the, are the challenges. But I think the major challenge is that a lot of actors go into rooms unprepared. Actually, the majority, right? And uh, they don't practice or they don't get a lot of auditions or a lot of work. So what happens when in between the time when you're working, the, you know, from job to job, is to stay practiced. It helps you. So we have a stage. The Toronto Monologue Slam allows you to battle it out and compete with the best of them and to keep your, your instrument oiled. Yeah, so I mean, the challenge, I think, for the industry is that is artists that are not prepared. Because this is a doggy dog world, man. You know, you could even be one of some of the best actors and they still don't get a job. So if you're not practiced, what are you doing? You should bow out and try something else. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think the film TV industry should should do or could do to change? Uh, create create more funding. Create more funding and diverse content. We live in a um, a multicultural city, you know? We have so many wonderful in immigrants coming here from all parts of the world with so many cultures, so much um, history that we need to develop work that displays their experiences. And therefore, the government needs to tap into that. Like, uh, Toronto, we live in mo one of the most diverse cities in the world. We've got so much art here. We just had the Jean-Michel Basquiat exhibit at the AGO. So we've got the pen Games, we've got Ovio Fest, we've got Carabana, we've got the Taste of Dance, we've got a lot of stuff going on. So if the government can tap into that and know that we have such a art, uh, diverse artistic realm here, then like help to fund it. You know, I know that we, we have other things that the government has to fund, but why not fund artists? We have a voice, we have things to say, and we have something to, we want to represent the people of Canada. So money, money needs to come into the city, a lot more of it, so that we can actually compete with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. We all have mentors. Yes. So I'll, I'll start with something else. Okay. We all have mentors. Who inspires? Who are your mentors and why? My mentors, I have a few. It's important to be a mentor and a mentee. My mentors, I have one of my professors from, from uh, theater school. His name is Gregory Simmons, and he's still my mentor. And I still run all my work through him. And, and we just talk about life um, and he's been a big influence in my life. Another mentor had been Denzel Washington. He actually started me out on my plight when I went from background to actually getting um, top-notch work was when he advised me to go to theater school in New York City after I met him during John Q. Um, so he oh, he's always an inspiration watching him work knowing that he connected to me in that way. He'll always be a mentor for me and probably most black people when you think about it. Um, I also like all my teachers uh, there's been a teacher um, Michelle Lonsdale Smith that I studied with for um, three and a half years and she's fantastic and she's at the Lonsdale Smith Studios. My mom is a mentor you know it's important for me to know my culture. Um, I'm, I'm Nigerian and Jamaican so my father's Nigerian my mom's Niger uh, my mom's Jamaican and uh, I just have really fantastic women, strong black women in my family that has always shaped me into who I am so that I don't forget that depth when I go to work. Yeah. And you do a lot of work. Just going back to Haiti. Yes. What are you doing there? Haiti is something that I've done yearly since 2010. And uh, we do a lot of charity work. Uh, we, we have two schools that we're building down there in Cite Soleil and Canaan. We work at the malnutrition clinic that uh, Mother Teresa has had there for years, um, helping to nurse the babies back to health. We also work at the AIDS hospice, and, um, the home for the dying, and just sitting with people and massages and pedicures and, you know, the last bits of kindness before they leave this earth. And we also work at another a clinic called the TB Clinic. It's called Brothers, actually. It's a TB clinic, and we do the same same thing. Whatever we need, whatever we need to do, um, putting together medicines, maybe helping to administer it. Um, but we also have a lot of fun in Haiti. We 
do not isolate ourselves from the people. We are completely engulfed in the culture so that we understand the culture even more and respect it so we will have even more of a wanting to help the people. Yes, and it's a very grassroots company. We're called Third World Awareness. You can always find us on twawareness.org. Twawareness.org. Yes, twawareness.org. Yes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, every, anybody is 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 you know welcome to come. Yeah, we do not discriminate. You know, it's an experience. And we pay our own way. We're all volunteer, and we just go down. And we bring everything. We don't even come back with anything. I come back with a bag to a carry on. That's it. My purse. But everything we leave in Haiti um, for the people. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. <laughs> this segment of 10 Questions has been brought to you by...